In this video, we'll measure the step response of an RC circuit. We'll use the waveform generator on our analog discovery to apply a square wave input to the circuit. As long as the frequency of our step input is low enough to allow the circuit to reach steady state, this will be an appropriate step input. We'll use RC circuits in this video, but the principles provided here are also applicable to RL circuits. Now in this video, we'll also look at the effects of loading the circuit. Often, our circuits are used to process or condition voltages which are applied to other circuits. The circuit to which they are connected tends to act as a load. We'll see that applying a load to a passive circuit can have a strong effect on the circuit's behavior, which complicates the design process considerably. We'll also see that active circuits, implemented using an operational amplifier, are less susceptible to loading effects. In the step response of an RC circuit, we're suddenly increasing the voltage across a combination of a capacitor and some equivalent resistance from zero to a constant value. The circuit we're using to illustrate this is the same circuit as our second example of the natural response video for the chapter's lab, except that the switch is moving in the opposite direction, from a short circuit to an applied voltage. We'll be taking advantage of some of the concepts from our previous video when we create and measure our step responses in this video. When we move the switch of our circuit, the capacitor's voltage will increase as shown here. The time constant of the circuit is the amount of time required for the voltage to get to about 63% of its final value. It's the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor times the capacitance. The first circuit we'll examine here is exactly the same as the second circuit we looked at in our Natural Responses Lab video for this chapter. We'll still use the waveform generator to apply a square wave to the circuit. However, to create a step response, we'll look at the circuit's response to an increase in voltage from the waveform generator. If we analyze our circuit to the response of a 5 volt step, where the wave generator voltage increases from 0 to 5 volts, we'll expect the final voltage to be 2.5 volts and the time constant to be about 0.052 seconds. Let's use our circuit from the last video to measure the response and compare it to our expectations. Here's our circuit from last time. We have two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors, a 47 microfarad capacitor, we're applying voltage to this terminal of this resistor using channel 1 of our waveform generator. Ground is applied to this terminal of this resistor. We're measuring the voltage across the capacitor using channel 1 of our oscilloscope. The waveform generator settings we'll use are the same as in our previous video. I'm just going to go ahead and start applying power. The oscilloscope settings will be almost the same as we previously used. The only difference we really need to make is that we need to change our trigger level to acquire the transition from a low to a high voltage level. So we'll use a rising condition on our trigger. To start acquiring data, click on Run. The acquired waveform looks more or less like we expect. If we want, we can again use our cursors as we did before to get an accurate measurement of the time constant and the final condition. Often, our circuits will need to be interconnected with other circuits to perform some overall task. Adding these other circuits often causes loading effects to our circuit. We'll investigate these loading effects by connecting a resistor across the capacitor in our previous circuit. Addition of this resistor, of course, changes the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor and also the time constant of the overall circuit. It'll also change the final voltage seen by the capacitor. If we've designed our earlier circuit to provide some desired overall time constant and final value, adding this load can cause the overall circuit to not behave as desired. Let's go back to our example circuit, add the resistor to it, and see what happens to our response. Here's our previous circuit. We'll add our loading resistor here in parallel with our capacitor. Here's our previous response. In order to obtain our new response, I'm going to reduce the trigger level down to about 1.5 volts and click on Run to acquire a new set of data. We can see that both the time constant and the steady state value have changed because of the addition of the loading resistor. We can alleviate these loading effects by using an active circuit. This circuit has a very similar response to our previous passive circuit. The time constant of this circuit is identical to the previous circuit. And the steady state response is close to the previous circuit. This circuit does, however, change the sign on the output. 
so that a negative input step from 0 volts to negative 5 volts results in the same response as the previous circuit to a positive 5 volt step input. However, if we load this circuit with the same resistor we used in our previous example, our measured response doesn't change significantly. So if we use this circuit to provide power to the load, we don't have to account for the load if we design our circuit to give us the desired time constant and final voltage. Let's quickly implement the circuit and show this. Here's our circuit. We're using a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor between the source, W1, and the inverting input of our op amp. We're using two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors in parallel to create the 1.1 kilo ohm resistor in the feedback loop. Here's our 47 microfarad capacitor. We're measuring our output voltage here and here. The output is jumpered to this point with this green jumper wire. Our waveform generator settings are almost what they were before, except that I've changed the offset to negative 2.5 to give us a negative 5 volt step input. I can turn on the waveform generator now. We need to apply power to the operational amplifier. I'm using V plus and V minus to do that. Let's turn on power for those power supplies. Now let's run the oscilloscope and acquire our step response. There it is. It looks like what we got before from our passive RC circuit. However, if we now add a resistor across our output for this circuit, Our measured output doesn't change at all. 